Five years ago, I attempted to make a bond from scratch on a level 3 free-to-play account. It took 14 hours. The price of a bond in 2016 was 2.9 mil. Since then, the price has only gone up. Right now, it costs a little over 5.1 million GP. A pretty big increase, but it also means there's an opportunity to see if I've still got it. Do I still have what it takes to earn a bond from scratch? I think I do, and today, we're going to find out. To mix it up a little bit, I'm going to limit myself to only unusual money-making methods. You guys love the series, so I figured it would be interesting to mix the from scratch and the unusual money-making genre together. I used methods that you guys have previously recommended, as well as some brand new methods that I tried out, including one that made me way more money than I ever thought it would. My bank has been completely cleaned out. All I have left are some untradables, some imbues, and my fat stew collection, which is staying put in my bank. I can't use anything in my bank unless I collect it during the challenge, so everything else here cannot be used. I made a bunch of new accounts recently to test some early game money makers, but I ran into a problem. I forgot the passwords. I know all of you have ran into the problem of forgetting your password and having to go through the annoying process of resetting it. Well, you won't have to worry about that anymore with Dashlane. Dashlane makes the slow and annoying parts of the internet faster and easier. It saves and autofills all your passwords or login information, so you never have to click forget password again. It also saves and autofills your personal and financial information, so you can fill out those tedious online forms in a single click. Dashlane works across all your devices and platforms. Computer, phone, tablet, you're covered. Can't think of a strong password? Don't worry. If you want, Dashlane will generate a strong and complex password for every account you own. The best way to avoid getting hacked after a data breach. If any of your accounts are affected by a data breach, you'll be alerted immediately and can change your password in just a few clicks. If this sounds helpful to you, head to dashlane.com soup and try Dashlane for free on your first device. If you'd like to upgrade to premium, use my code soup at checkout for 50% off. It's a fantastic product that I can't recommend enough. Stopwatch ready? Let's begin. To start off, I need to find a decent method to make a starting cash stack, and thanks to Wild Muffin, I think I found one. Muffin says that if you do the new Getting Ahead quest, you get access to a shelf that gives unlimited red and yellow dyes. The best way to do the method is to run back and forth between the bookshelf and the farming guild bank. Red dyes go for 415 GP each, yellow dyes go for 351. To take a die from the shelf, you just need to left click on it and press 1 to take a red die or 2 to take a yellow die. Since red dye are more expensive than yellow dye, it makes sense to solely focus on red dye. As long as we can get all the dyes to sell, we should end up with a nice cash stack. I'm going to do this for one hour to see how many dyes I can get. I don't have any teleports or stamina potions, so I'll just be running back and forth between here and the farming guild bank, with a mixture of walking and running. Now to find out how many I can grab in one hour. We are now at 1 hour and 8 minutes, we managed to collect 898 red dye and sell them for 405 GP each for a total of 363,000 GP. Just like that from 0 GP, we are up to a 363k cash stack, only 4.7 mil to go. Now here's the plan. I'm going to buy a house teleport and use the ferry ring in my house to get to Miscellanea, take the boat to Relica, head north a bit, then take more gunner's boat to Yatazo. On Yatazo, we're going to invest in something a little bit strange. During the Fremnig Isles quest, if you choose the paid attacks for Van Liga Gas for Heat instead of making her pay, she'll make her shop available to you after the quest is over. In that shop, she has yak hide, raw yak meat, cured yak hide, and hair. Not yak hair, hair. So we don't know where the hair is coming from, but she's selling it, and at a very cheap price. She sells the hair for 2 GP, and the GE price is currently 225 GP, so we're making over 200 GP profit per hair. Hair has a market for it because of the streamer Odablock, who collects hair as a joke because of his, well, lacking hairline. She has 50 in stock, so we can do 2 inventories per world. There's a bank pretty much right next to the shop as well, so we're able to bank every inventory very quickly. I'm still going to run out of run every once in a while, but we'll still be able to get a good amount of hair. One hour, let's smuggle some hair.
two hours, 10 minutes on the clock, and we've collected 3,183 pieces of hair. The great thing is, it only cost us 10k, so our return here is going to hopefully be very good. I'm going to throw all the hair in the GE for 225 GP each, and while I wait for it all to sell, I'm going to invest the rest of my cash stack into pastry dough and pie dishes. We tested this method during one of our unusual money making method videos and it made us around 230k. All I'm going to do is turn the dough and dishes into pie shells. It's a pretty relaxing way to make a bit of money while bank standing, so I'll be doing that while we wait. All right, all the hair has sold and we got back 716K. So one hour of buying hair made us 706,000 GP. The best method we've done yet. Even better than when we tried it a year ago. Invest in hair, everybody. Our pie shells have also all sold for 240K. The cost of the supplies was 187K. So we made 50K profit. It's not too great, but I'll take any profit I can get. We are two hours and 45 minutes in and we are officially over 1 million GP. A bit more than 1.1 million GP to be more exact. Next up, I want to try out a brand new method that came out very recently, opening a brand new chest added to the Isle of Souls dungeon. The chest loot is pretty bad, you can get uncut diamonds and renar weeds which have some value, but everything else is pretty bad. However, it is the only place where you can get the new Dark Key. The Dark Key opens another brand new chest called the Dark Chest, found in the basement of the Crumbling Tower, also on the Isle of Souls. The Dark Chest can give you a bunch of different items. The loot ranges anywhere from 1k all the way up to 160k. I bought some house teleports, dueling rings, and a lockpick. I'm going to loot this chest until I get a Dark Key. I don't care how long it takes, I want to get at least one. I learned very early on that looting this chest is incredibly annoying. It's located towards the end of the dungeon, so it's quite the run to get there. Every time you fail to open the chest, you have a chance to get kicked out of the dungeon. You'll end up outside of it and have to run all the way back into the chest. Now I have 91 thieving, so I was hoping that this wouldn't happen too often, but man, it happened very often. I'd say for every full inventory of loot that I got, I was kicked out of the dungeon three to four times. It got to the point where I decided it was worth it just to invest in a couple of stamina potions and bring one with me so I wouldn't keep running out of run energy. So that was kind of annoying. The average inventory was around 25k and took around 15 minutes. I started looting the chests at 2 hours and 50 minutes and I got my first dark key at 4 hours and 30 minutes. So it took almost 2 hours to get the dark key. A bit longer than I was hoping for. If we get a bad item from this dark chest, this could have been a massive waste of time. Luckily, the RNG gods were on our side today. We got one of the best drops possible, grimy snapdragons, 11 of them worth 92k. I could have gotten 400 my runes worth 1.2k, so I'm pretty happy with this drop. In total, I looted 353 Isle of Souls chests, and the final loot, including the dark key loot, added up to 340k. I also snagged a medium clue while doing the chest, but it was only worth 16k. After 4 hours and 40 minutes, we're up to 1,405,000 GP. Next up, I'm going to revisit a method that made me pretty much no GP the first time I tried it. Opening up ogre coffins with ogre coffin keys. Last time, it only made me 100 GP in an hour, but apparently, prices have changed a bit, so I'm going to try this again. I'm going to invest in 630 keys at a slightly lower price than usual so we can hopefully make more profit per key. While I wait for the keys to buy, we're going to relax for a little bit and mine some basalts. Basalt was one of the very first money makers we tried out on the Unusual Money Making series and it made us over 500k an hour. Prices of basalt have since dropped but it's still not a bad way to make some money while sitting back and relaxing. All you have to do is grab a pickaxe, head to Weiss, head down into the salt mine, and mine the stalagmites with the black streaks on them. You can get anywhere from one to a full inventory of basalt per stalagmite, making it fairly AFK. There's no bank or bank deposit here, but what you can do is once you have a full inventory, you can head back upstairs and use the basalt on a troll called Snowflake. She'll note all of your basalt for you free of charge. So while I wait for the keys, let's relax and mine. After 50 minutes, all the keys have finally bought. I managed to mine 487 basalt, which sold for 202k. After changing the price a little bit of all the keys, I bought them all for a total of 643k. Alongside the keys, I'm going to buy some more dueling rings and stamina potions. Coffin keys can be opened south of Castle Wars and Jigig by using them on the coffins. Every time you open the chest, you have a chance to get some random loot, as well as one of four types of bones. 
There's a 50% chance to get Zogar Bones, which are only worth 379 GP, which loses us money, but the rest of the bones make us money. We paid around 1k per coffin key, so to make profit, we need to get these bones as often as possible. There's almost a 4% chance we get Org Bones, which are worth 31k. When used at a Gilded Altar, they give 490k XP. Only superior Dragon Bones give you more, so these things are rare and expensive. If we can get enough of the Farg, Rarg, and Org Bones, we'll be in the money. Alright, so we finished using all the keys after 53 minutes, and here's what the final loot looks like. 1.4 million GP. That is very good. The last time I did this, I only made 100 GP. This time, after selling all the loot, I walked away with 1,339,000 GP. Good for a profit of 695k. We also got an easy clue, and the loot was a Highwayman mask and 6 purple sweets worth 84k, so very good. 6 hours and 31 minutes in, and we're up to 2,344,000 GP. Almost halfway. I think it's time to bring out my secret weapon, a moneymaker that I think has the chance to seriously grow our cash stack. I'm going to buy 600 planks, 600 clockworks, and some teleport to house runes. If you have 85 crafting and a crafting table 4 in your house, you can make toy cats. Toy cats can be released and they'll follow you around like a pet. They are the only type of pet that can be traded with another player. Because of the high requirements and uncommon method of making them, you can make quite a bit of money. A clockwork and a plank go for a combined 964 GP. When looking at the price of a cat on the GE, I noticed that the actively traded price was over 3600 GP, which means that per toy cat, we're making 2600 GP. Whoa. It's super easy to make the cats. You click on the workbench, press 4, then 5, and you've made a cat. And you get 15 crafting XP per one. You don't have to wait for the menu to pop up either. You can just left click, instantly tap 4, 5, and the cat gets made. After a finished inventory, I teleport to Castle Wars, get out more supplies, and repeat the process. A little less than one hour later, we've got 595 toy cats and 5 toy mice, which I accidentally made. It's my bedtime, so I'm going to leave all these cats in overnight and hope that they sell. Good morning, everyone. I've woken up to a fantastic sight. All of my toy cats have sold for 3,600 GP each, making us a total of 2,134,000 GP. We spent 590k on supplies, which means we profited 1.5 mil. That is by far some of the best profit I've ever made testing any unusual moneymaker. Our cash stack is now 3.9 million GP. We're almost there. Now I feel like it'd be kind of silly to not use this method a bit more with how much money we made from it, so I'm going to buy another 400 clockworks and planks and make a few more of these luscious golden toy cats. I finished making all the cats, I'm going to put them in on the GE for 3400 GP, a bit cheaper than last time in hopes that they sell a bit quicker. We're now at 8 hours and 7 minutes, and while I wait for them to sell, I'm going to try out a method I saw on the OSR's wiki money making section, making raw admiral pies. They sell for 1,021 GP each, and the supplies cost a total of 476 GP, so 545 GP profit per pie. I'm going to buy supplies for 400 pies, so we'll make about 200,000 GP off doing this. I wanted to find a little chill bank standing money making method while I wait for the rest of my cats to sell, so this is perfect. I've always wanted to make Admiral Pies for a living anyway. I finished making all the Admiral Pies and sold them for 408k. I'm still waiting for the final 100 toy cast to sell, but I don't really feel like waiting because I think we're very close to being able to buy a bond, so I'm just going to cancel the offer and put them in for 2k, which should instant sell, and give us enough money to buy a bond. 5,094,000 GP. Is that enough to buy the bond? F it's not. We're 60k GP short. Okay. Shoot, just let me quickly buy some more ingredients for pie shells, make those, and then sell everything else I have in my bank. Okay, here we go. We're almost at the 9 hour mark. I just need to sell everything and we should be good. The final offer for a bond is going to be 5,160,000 GP. If this doesn't buy a bond, I'll be very sad. Oh, 
Oh wait, a bot. Nice. Stop the clock. We've done it. One bond from scratch doing only unusual money-making methods in 8 hours, 54 minutes, and 56 seconds. We've managed to do it just before the 9-hour mark. Mission success. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. I've now got a bond and no one to give it to. I'm pretty set on membership on this account, so how about I give it away to one of you? I'm probably going to try this out again in the future, so along with your suggestions for what methods I should try out, also leave a time for how long you think it'll take me to get a bond. If you want me to pretend to be a girl for GP and think it'll take 6 hours and 35 minutes, just leave a comment like this. The closest guess wins the bond. If you want to watch more of my content, check out my video on discovering a new RuneScape cheat and my last unusual money-making methods video.